This video is going to cover the entire initial programming process on a Videofied XT-IP630 system. So we'll go ahead and insert our SIM card, and then we're going to power the unit. Now that the unit is powered, grab your keypad and also power that up. To enroll the keypad into the panel, press the programming button one time, and then escape and clear at the same time on the keypad. You'll see the flashing LED, and our keypad has now been enrolled into the system, and you're going to press OK to enter initial programming. So here I've gone ahead and mounted the keypad cover to the wall already. So you've got the two screws right here and here, but this is the most important here. This is the breakaway tamper, so if someone were to rip this keypad off of the wall, this piece would remain and the system would transmit the tamper alarm. So let's go ahead and place our keypad onto the back cover here. Just make sure we're lining up these tick marks on either side. And then we're just going to slide the keypad down until it clicks into place. And go ahead and wake up your keypad, so we're back in the initial programming. We're going to select our language, English. This is asking us to radio range test the keypad. So what this is going to do if we hit OK is initiate the test. And while this test is running, what it's actually doing is sending data packets bidirectionally between the control panel and the keypad here. So we actually want to see this climb to 9 of 9 and hold at 9 of 9 for approximately 30 seconds before we stop the test. We can hit OK to stop it, and we're going to hit No since we already ran the range test. And now it's prompting us to create a four to six digit installer code. So I'm gonna go ahead and type my code in here. Re-enter it. And then we can assign a name to it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and press okay here. So it takes a generic access number. Since it's the first code on the system, it's gonna take access number one. And we're gonna set the date and time here. And we're going to be provided with two different options here, auto, or if we right arrow, we could set it to manual. That's self-explanatory. We're just going to change it back to auto, which is a time zone feature. Press OK. We're going to set our UTC time zone. And we're located in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, so we're on central. And so now we're in the subzone, and I'm going to select my time zone here, central U.S. and Canada. Connecting to monitoring station, we always want to go ahead and press OK on this option here. This is going to enable the system for monitoring and allow us to enter the necessary information. So here we have the account number. And this is typically going to be a four to eight digit number that the central station will provide to you. Next we can configure the periodic test on the system. Typically it's going to be set up for 24 hour. So we can press OK there. And then it's going to prompt us to set up the time of day in which it's going to report on a 24-hour clock, starting with the hour. And we can use the arrow keys here to modify that. Press OK, and then we can modify the minutes as well. I'm going to set it to 2.30 and press OK. And this brings us to event state modification. This option provides us with the ability to toggle individual event reporting and restorals on the system for things such as tampers, low batteries, arm and disarm events, etc. But because these settings come pre-configured by default, I'm just going to go ahead and skip over this option here. And now we're at server addresses. This is where we can enter the IP, domain, and port information for the central station. Press OK to enter that menu. This will bring us to our primary IP address. We can go ahead and scroll through with the arrows. So it takes us to the primary domain, primary port, and this will typically be 888. Scroll to the secondary IP, secondary domain, secondary port option, and then the TMT IP address, which allows for remote maintenance. So we have an IP domain or port for that as well. And scrolling around takes us back to the primary IP address. Press OK to modify that. And then we're going to go ahead and type the IP in here. So keep in mind that it does need to be three digits per octet here. So if there is a two-digit number, it does need to have that preceding zero. Press OK to save that. 
And then when we're done, we can hit Escape No to back out of that menu. And Escape No again to bypass server addresses since we were just in there. Next up is the calling strategy of the system. So we can configure the system so that it's set up to transmit only over IP, which is going to be ETH or Ethernet here. We can configure it for only cellular, defined as 2G, 3G, or the default, which is primary on Ethernet, secondary on GSM. So I'm going to set it up for that. And this brings us to 2G, 3G parameters where we can enter the information for our SIM card. And then really the only thing that's relevant under here is going to be the APN code, which differs depending on the SIM provider that you're using. So we can press OK, we've got the colon there, and now we can go ahead and type our APN code in. Hit OK to save that. And that's all we need to do in this menu. So we're going to go ahead and hit Escape No to back out. Escape No again to bypass 2G, 3G parameters since we were just in there. And this is where we can test our cell reception on the panel. So press OK to initiate that. And this test will typically take between 20 to 30 seconds before you see a result. And here we have our result. Just keep in mind that we do want to see a minimum of 3 of 5 here. But we also want to make sure that we allow it to rest on this screen once we've gotten a result, just to verify that the signal's not fluctuating. And then press OK to exit the test, and escape No to bypass that 2G, 3G level test. Which brings us next to Ethernet parameters, where we can define our IP parameters for the panel. So what you will notice here is that it is configured for DHCP by default which means that it should pull an IP automatically when plugged into a router or a switch. And therefore, we're just going to skip over these options for this demonstration. Which brings us to Ethernet status, where we can actually test the panel's connection on the local network and verify that it's pulling a local IP. So I'm going to press OK to initiate this test here, and we're going to wait for the result. And there we have our result, that's our local IP, and that's exactly what we want to see. So I'm going to hit OK to end that test, and then Escape No on Ethernet status, which brings us to Areas Configuration. This is just prompting us to name the areas, and instead I'm just going to skip over this. And next is Arming Profile. The default is going to be Standalone. And the other option is going to be Extender, so if we plan to piggyback the VideoFide system onto an existing host panel, that's the setting that we would use. However, for this demonstration, I'm just going to set it to Standalone and hit OK on that option. Next, we can configure our exit delay, and the minimum is 45 seconds. But if we scroll through, we have 1 minute and a maximum of 2 minutes. So I'm just going to set it back to the 45 second. Now we can set our entry delay. So as you can see here, the minimum's 15 on this one, 30, 45, one minute, up to the two minute maximum we saw with that exit delay. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 45, just like we have for our exit delay. Which brings us to recording devices. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our first device, the IMV, press the enroll button, and that device has now been learned into the system. So we see Motion Viewer 1 recorded. I'm gonna press OK. And now we can range test this device just like we did with the keypad. So if we press OK here, that will initiate the test and you can observe on the physical device a blinking LED for every successful ping that it receives on that range test. And we want to ensure that this holds at 9 of 9 for approximately 30 seconds before we go ahead and end the test. Press OK to end it. And then escape no to bypass it. So here we have the area allocation, which means we could set this device up for delay or instant. So area one is our delay area. Area two would be instant. So I'm just gonna place this in the delay area. And now we're prompted to name this device. And typically you wanna assign a name based on what this device is protecting. So if we were trying to protect the front door, maybe you wanna call it front door or rear door, uh, but you can enter whatever you'd like in here. Press OK when you're done. The final step in the device enrollment process is the functional device test. And this will test the function of the PIR sensor on the motion viewer. And as you can see, when I go ahead and wave my hand in front of this device, we're getting that LED notification, which lets us know that this device's PIR is detecting properly. 
press OK when you're satisfied with the results of the test. And then we can enter a new device. So I'm going to hit OK. I have a door sensor here that I'm going to enroll. So pressing the enrollment button, we've got the LED and the device is checking in and the contact has been recorded now. Press OK. And again, I want to radio range test this device as well. So I'm going to press OK to initiate the test. And just like we saw with the indoor motion viewer, the LED is flashing once for every successful packet that it receives. So again, we want to allow this test to climb to 9 of 9 and hold there for approximately 30 seconds and then press OK to end the test. Escape no to bypass that. And I'm going to set this up in area 1 so it follows the entry and exit delays. And because this is a door window sensor, we can actually set this up as a perimeter device here. So it's going to prompt us for that. So I'm going to say yes to this. And again, we're going to assign a name to this device. In this example, I'm just going to name this entry. And the final enrollment step here is the functional device test. Keep in mind that this test is essential when it comes to door contacts, as it will determine the normal state of the device. So before we initiate this test, you're going to want to ensure that you have the magnet lined up properly with the door contact. Once you've done so, press OK to initiate the test. Separate the contact from the magnet, where you can observe that the LED illuminates when the device is in the open state, and that the LED is no longer lit when the device is in its closed state. Finally, press OK to end the test. And since I'm not planning to enroll any other devices in this demonstration, I'm going to hit the Escape No to move forward in programming. And because the system has detected a badge reader, it's asking if we would like to enroll any badges at this time. And I've actually got a badge here, so I'm going to say yes to this. Press OK, and then I'm going to present the badge to the reader. See the green LED? And now it's prompting us to name this badge. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to name it Badge 1. And that's all there is to it for enrolling a badge. So I'm going to hit Escape No since I'm not planning to enroll any other badges at this time. But there's one final important step which requires that we place the cover onto the panel so that the tamper is secure. Once that step has been completed, we're going to see this operation completed prompt. We're going to press OK, which brings us to the end of initial programming.